Hi, this is Ruben from Crown Themes, and in this video tutorial, I want to show you how to create rich product pages, but not only product pages, that are unique and have different kind of content per product or per page template using both page templates and meta fields or dynamic data. So, when you start editing your Shopify store or any Shopify theme, you will notice that each product page looks the same. You have a product page template in which you set up your product page with different kinds of options, add blocks based on what the theme that you're editing has to offer. But then at the end, if you open a new product page, you will see the same content, except of the content that is already dynamic, of course, the name, the price, the images, the variants. But whenever you want to add something new to the product, even a simple text block saying this product is red and yellow. Let's put this at the top. Okay and then go to another product, you will see the same text again. This is because all the static information in any page template will be the same for any of those pages. Now, how can we go around this? First of all, we will be using page templates. We are using our local theme for this demo, but of course, all the themes, all Shopify themes work in the same way. So all the information that you get in this video is the same, no matter what Shopify theme you are using. The only difference will be in the actual blocks or sections that each theme has. So for example, in our local demo, we have two different kinds of products. We have the food products, which have some information at the top, then a list of icons here. And at the end, they have nutritional information tab. The kitchen appliances products, on the other hand, have a different set of options. They don't have these icons here and they don't have the nutritional information either. So, how are we doing this? When we are editing the product page template, you can see that you have the ability to create another template. So if you hit this button, you are able to create a different template, a unique template for your products or for a different product. Now let's say that we create a template called kitchen and we start to add this, edit just this template. I can do whatever I want with this template, hide all the blocks, add new blocks, and this template will be different from the other templates, right? Okay, so what happens when I go and try to preview a product? I'm still seeing the default template, because the new template isn't assigned to any page. You can see this when you go to the templates. Here you can see that the kitchen template, the newly created template is assigned to zero products. Okay, so let's assign a page template. For this, you need to go to products, if we are talking about product templates, and select a certain product, for example, this one. And here under theme template, you need to select for this product to use the template that you've created earlier, in our case, kitchen. Now, please take a note here. If you are working with an unpublished theme, so if you are creating templates in a trial theme or in a theme that is not published, you will not see the templates created here. This is a Shopify platform limitation and you will be able to assign those templates only after you publish the theme that you've created the templates in. So now we've created the theme template kitchen, we've assigned it. And when I hit view, 
I see the new template with the new information. Perfect. Great. So now let's get back to the first step and let's say that we want to add a, a block, in this case let's add a collapsible tab with some information about the product that we're viewing. Let's say that we want to give our customers some recipes, ideas and put them in under a collapsible tab. And for this chunk I stake we're giving three different ideas, right? We are saving this and of course whenever we change the product we will get the same recipes, ideas in all the templates which is obviously not good. So here comes in place the meta fields or dynamic data. On most content settings you will see this icon which says connect dynamic source. When you click it you might see a long list of dynamic sources that you already might have or you might see nothing. So let's create a meta field. For this you need to go to the settings area of your store, click custom data and then enter products because you want to write a product meta field. Make sure that you write the proper meta field in the proper place. For example, if you want to use dynamic data or custom data in products, you need to create a product meta field. If you are, want to use them in collection pages, you need to create a collection meta field and so on. You cannot access other meta fields from other page types, right? So for this purpose, we will create a new meta field under products. We hit add definition. In this case, we want to add recipes, ideas. You might want to write a description, especially if you have many meta fields in your store in order to be able to identify what you have to write in each area. Then you have to select the type of the meta field. This is really important and needs to be connected with the option line that you are trying to edit. For example, if we would want to add a heading dynamic source, here we would use single line text. If we want to add the tab content, here we are using the multi line text or even the rich text if this is rich text, if it supports all of this. If we want to connect a page or an image, we need to create a page or an image. This is the file, meta field and so on. So make sure that always you are creating the proper type of meta field, otherwise you won't see it when you try to connect it. So we said that here we want a rich text, we are saving it, and then when we go back to our product, in the product area of the admin, in the meta fields you will see all the meta fields that are created here. And here is our last meta field, recipes created. I will paste here the content that I wanted, hit save, go back to the product, delete everything that is here and connect dynamic source. You will see the new created meta field recipes ideas and when I enter this, whoops, I don't see anything. Okay, why I don't see anything? Because I am in the wrong product. Now you can see that this product chunk I stake has recipes ideas connected by a meta field. So the information doesn't stay in the page template in the theme customizer, it's in the product itself. Let's go ahead and add a definition for another product, let's say coconut water, some recipe ideas, then when we go to coconut water product, we should see, okay, we see our new ideas. So this is in generally how you use meta fields. You create a meta field for each content type that you want to edit, for each block that you want to have dynamic data, different data per product or per page, depending on what you're editing. And from this point, the possibilities are endless. We will explore some other examples a bit later, but for now, 
what happens with those products that don't have meta fields because you might not want to add the same content in each product. For these products, in our themes, we have a little checkbox here saying hide block if dynamic content is not present. If you check this little box, you will see that if there is no content inside the tab, for example, the entire block will disappear. This is an easy way to make sure that no bad content appears on your pages. Not all blocks have this option, but still the general idea that if a block is connected to a dynamic source and the dynamic source is empty, it will not show anyway. For example, let's put a text block, let's connect it to the same recipes, ideas. You will see that nothing appears here, right? Because we don't have any dynamic data in this, even if it's connected. But when I go to coconut water, you will see the information here. Let's see some other types of meta field. For example, here I'm creating a recipe idea image, choosing a file. I want it to support only images. You can choose whatever you want here. I'm saving it. And then let's put an image here for the coconut water. Save, go back here and put connect an dynamic source to the tab image. We're working with the same tab, recipe in DIS images, and we're having our image inside the tab, right? If we go to Chiangkai steak, we have a different image. And if we go to a different product, there is no content here. So this is in generally how you use meta fields inside product pages, inside product blocks in order to highlight various aspects of your products. But meta fields are not limited to blocks. You can use them in sections as well. Let's say we want to use a rich text section and make this more about recipes. We do the same. We connect this to the dynamic data that we have. Okay, let's let's go to a product that has those meta fields set. So we're here. Okay, let's position the text. Let's connect the image as well. And here you have it, a section that uses the same dynamic data in order to provide information about that product. With this in mind, you can really extend this however you like, the only limitation being your own content. If we go to the other product, we can see the same information here, the same section here with a different information. Now, when you are using sections, you won't get that height block if dynamic data is not present checkbox. So in such products, the section will be empty. So here comes place a combination of using both product templates and meta fields. Some products might have extra information, some might not have. So when creating rich product pages, you really need to work with a combination between both product page templates or page templates and meta fields. And that's it. I hope that this video gets you on the right track when working with dynamic data in your Shopify store and that you are now able to create custom, unique, rich product pages and not only.